welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker with a green tea today. Um, different story behind this green tea. I'll get into that in just a moment. It's it's um, more of the Japanese green tea style, but not. But that doesn't necessarily mean it comes from Japan. So I'm going to scoop this out, get it going in my teapot here. I want to cover. Uh, a teapot like this, I want to make sure to cover at least the bottom surface area, the flat surface area of the teapot here. That's a good starting point, and that looks good. So I'll set that aside. My water's been brought to an early boil, started to rumble a little bit, not a full rolling boil. And I want to add, kind of moving around, because I don't want these little leaves, these portions to... Uh, just rest on the top. I want them to get coated with water. That looks pretty good. That helps. So I'll set this off to the side now and cover this. Let these leaves steep for a while. And introduce this tea that I was telling you is a, more of a unique background. This particular, I got this from Tealit. And Tealit is a, is, a, is a website which is also kind of a marketplace for growers to put their teas directly onto a, a market place uh, so that you can find out and you can uh, cut out kind of some of the middlemen between you and the growers. You can find out a lot more about the growers and their teas from Tealit. Uh, this is from the growers at Mauna Kea, uh, Taka and Kimberly. This is their Mauna Kea Sweet Roast Green, so it's a, a green tea. Now, I've actually been out to visit uh, the Mauna Kea uh, estate, the farm there, uh, and I know that they have, they do a lot, not necessarily fully or completely, but they follow a lot of the more uh, Japanese traditions uh, in their growing, in their processing, in their style of preparation as well, their preferred style of, recommended styles of preparation. Now, I should go ahead and say Mauna Kea, Sweet Roast Green, found on the Tealit Marketplace site, 30 grams available for $19.50. This is, uh, you know, 2013 spring. Uh, the, the spring harvest is probably coming in. I, I suspect uh, the timing of when I received this. This is probably from the 2012 harvest. So, uh, young, or I should say, you know, younger, less established uh, tea farms, that's part of it, but also seasonal differences in, at a location, um, differences year over year, can create slight variations in uh, the final product. So that's something to consider that the, what the reflections of what I'm about to say may or may not reflect 100% uh, accurately on upcoming harvests or upcoming teas from Mauna Kea and from Tealit. So I should talk about the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor, starting off here with the dry. Sweet smells. When I breathe and put a little heat onto it, I get more of a, a toasty. This is kind of a toasty grain type of roasted note. It came off, um, oh, I don't know, a little bit kind of nearly roasted corn. Uh, there's a Korean style of roasted corn, roasted barley. Some of those kind of notes came out. Roasted, toasted rice was also a little bit there, so it had a bit of sweetness to it, too. Light, fresh sweetness there. Again, something kind of like a, a light uh, corn sweetness there. Looking at these leaves... You can see that they are flakes of leaves, not uh, le intact leaves here. Um, they've, they're more of a, a kind of a pale olive type of green color. Um, you know, a lot of these are a quarter of an inch in length and or width. So lots of, a lot of variation in size there. And I'm uh, going to just kind of leave it at there. Don't fairly even in color don't see a lot of uh, didn't see a lot of oxidation type rust blotches there that's something to note now i'm going to go ahead and pour this tea so to talk i can look talk more about the uh, the liquor and the wet leaf so i'm going to hold my lid over with one hand i turn my lid a little bit so that the the hole in the lid allows air 
would be towards the top as I tilt it and get a nice smoother pour here. Okay, that's good. Now I'll be able to talk a little bit about this leaf. Actually, I'm going to get a lid here, just so as we have a white background to look at these leaves too. The aromas, of course, are stronger now. Um, a bit richer, sweeter. Let me kind of let that cool just a second. Sweet, still the, still the roasty element is the dominant uh, aroma there. Let me scoop out a few of these leaves and set them on the lid. Again, because they're flakes, it's just going to be kind of a, a pile of, of wet leaf flakes there. It's going to be harder to kind of sip, pull them apart, hold them up, and look at them very much. So let me set that to the side here. Again, some kind of, uh, again, it's, this has got more of a, um, I get these kind of smells from like a cookie cha, something that's got a lot of twigs in it, something that's got, got a roasted, roasted woody type of smell. I, I, I'm, that is to say, I'm not getting, um, you know, some of the more traditional uh, Chinese type of aromas. I'm not getting a lot of the uh, traditional Japanese type aromas either. If anything, there may be, if anything, there is a, a, a kind of a, a, a roasted uh, artichoke uh, kind of smell. There's, so it's got that woody and a bit of a, a, a faint, uh, a sweet artichoke type of smell. Looking at the leaves, not a whole lot to tell. They have darkened up because of being steeped in the water so that they are now more of a darker uh, darker green, uh, closer to maybe, you know, that, that basic uh, dark green uh, military, U.S. military army uniform kind of color there. So I'm going to move on now and talk about this liquor. Give it a swirl here. Get some of the steam off the sides. Deep yellow color there. You can see the, the, the filaments, the natural components from the leaf floating there in the, in the liquor. Again, roasty smells. Still in that, uh, still in that neighborhood of, say, um, corn and uh, the artichoke, type, roasted artichoke type of smells. Let me give it a taste here. Toasted grains, uh, again, uh, dry heated wood, woody type notes there. Um, something in that neighborhood of uh, cookie cha and, and uh, maybe lightly toasted corn. Stringency quite low, a brothiness. It has a it has a bit more of the astringent as the brothy kind of texture towards the front of the mouth as it moves to the back. It's a very thin, very thin coating. Um, drops off relatively quickly. Aftertaste uh, a bit of that, um, a bit of that toasty, a uh, roasty, woody uh, branches uh, type of note, cookie cha kind of notes, with a little bit of a corn, a, a faint corn sweetness. There, a gentle corn sweetness rather. Um, looking at this tea as a whole, 
my experience um, my experience tends to be confirmed through my tastings that a good cup of tea, the results here in front of you, are often from, say, you know, 25 percent is the, the the growing of the plant and the, the harvest of the plant. Say 50 percent is the processing and 25 percent is the way that you steep it. Um, with this tea, I would give it, hmm, this is tough, I would probably give this one an 80, ooh, an 85 nice some it's it, it didn't uh, it didn't get too watery it wasn't over harshly overly astringent either it had some notes yet it wasn't that complex um, yeah I'll, I'll leave it at that if it's something uh, this is again a, a Hawaii grown tea something that's more unique um, something that is ever-changing because the, the the state of teas in Hawaii is, is kind of up in the air right now. Everybody's trying to figure out what kind of uh, varieties do better, how to kind of create the, a distinctive Hawaii variety for the, the vast differences in geographic makeup on the Hawaii Islands. Some are more volcanic, some are more of a red clay. The islands can be quite different. So everybody's finding that right, that right plant to put in the right place. Uh, and then process in the in the optimal way too. So, uh, a snapshot of what Hawaii teas can be and are becoming, hopefully. So, come back to Walker Tea Review to find out about this tea and others.